Okay, I'm going to try something uh, new on this coil that I have not done on any of my others. But I've had trouble um, as I wind over the cotton with the cotton sliding back because of the tension in the windings. So I'm going to take a piece of masking tape. I'm going to put it here in the very end piece and I'm going to really wrap it on there tight. And that's going to uh, hold down this cotton covering and keep it from sliding back. Plus, it's going to um, help protect the wire here at the end from hitting the, uh, the wires under it. So, I'm not worried about it messing up the, uh, the capillary action of the water and the cotton or anything. For one, as this masking tape, it will uh, slowly with time allow electrolyte to pass through it. The other reason I'm not worried about is we have so much exposed cotton. We have so much exposed cotton on the wire covering and on this piece of cotton here that I just, I'm not worried about it. I suppose if you guys, uh, if it bothers you in some way, you can come up with, with something else, but this is what we're doing on this one. There we go. So now we'll remove this uh, clamp. And we'll start the next uh, set of windings. This part is very important. It's important that you keep the copper on the top. It's also important that as you uh, start these new windings, that this uh, iron doesn't sneak down behind this masking tape anywhere and uh, touch the, the copper wire under it. So far it looks like we're doing pretty good. Okay, now we're coming to our first uh, overlap with the wire that we have uh, in the course below. So you can see that we want to keep them tight just as before. It'll be a little harder to slide them up tight now because we're on top of cotton, we're not right on the iron. But again, very important that you keep keep the wires close to each other, that you keep nice winds. I'll turn the camera back on here uh, when I get up to that splice. I'll show you what I do to go around the splices. All right, we're coming up on the uh, splice here. You can, I don't know if you can see, but the splice uh, is running right under there. So I'm going to come up close to it on one side. You can see that that uh, cotton cover copper wire is going right by the, uh, the splice on this side. Now I'm going to have to come along here, and as I come to this side, instead of going again, try and go up and over it, I'm going to put a bend around it on this side. and then I'm going to return back next to these wires and then I'm just going to try to even out that bend over the next the next few uh, winds and I'll do that by leaving a small amount of space on the, uh, the back side. Now, I know this is going to mess it up a little bit and all but hey that's the way I do it. I'm sure there's better ways to do it. One of the the best solutions would be to find a supplier of this wire that sells it in a lot larger, longer uh, rolls. That would be the, the ultimate solution in my mind. So anyway, you can see that I've uh, compensated for that. We're now coming back um, with a nice even winding here. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but on the next course, when I press down this cut, and that's just going to be a, a very small uh, bulge. We'll be able to work out the uh, the splice here in another layer or two of, of cotton. Okay, you can see here that we're coming to the uh, finish line on the second layer on our Nathan Stubble Field Coil. Again, very important that you really look in these cracks and make sure that you don't get any separation that would allow you to go down and touch the uh, wires below. Alright, we're almost Almost done here with this layer. Okay, it's starting to get uh, tight in there, so I will uh, stop it right there. And we'll just pinch that off. Alright, now uh, for the fun stuff. Again, we need to uh, check and see what we're getting on this coil. We have not wet down any of the uh, the wire or the cotton on this layer yet. So the layer below is wet. 
but this a new layer will also need to be uh, wet down. All right, let's see what we're getting here. First of all, let's check and make sure that we're not shorted. We are not, that is a good thing. All right, our voltage is at uh, 0.7 volts again. That's really good. We're at 13 or so milliamps. Not bad. Uh, it's very common for it to fluctuate down from what it was in the last reading. Um, so I'm not all concerned about that. My coils have run anywhere completed from 10 to 30 milliamps, some up to 50. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, wet down this layer. You can see the, uh, the milliamps now rapidly rising up. We're up to 18. We'll be up to 20 uh, milliamps here with just uh, two layers, I predict. All right, so that's on its way up past 20 milliamps. Again, not really the most important thing about these coils. Again, we are going for electromagnetic effect. So let's get our uh, compass hooked up on this coil and see how we're doing in that respect because that's what really matters. All right. Hopefully uh, you can see this in the uh, camera. We'll let it stabilize here. All right, let's check. All right, I'm seeing a lot more <coughs> swing on that compass. I hope you can see that in the camera because that's uh, really important. That's what we're shooting for. So on our second layer we already have uh, 20 milliamps and we're getting some good action on the compass. So that's just going to increase uh, with the layers. And um, I will go ahead and